Hey everybody, it's Shadowstar and Crystal here for another review of Legends of Tomorrow. This time it's the Legion of Doom, one of my favourite episodes. Yeah, at first I thought the name doesn't tell us much, but it is really about them. In fact, Damien got to do the intro. Yeah, it is fun that they let Damien do the intro, and when the um, title card plays, it shows all of their logos, usually rather yeah. than the Legends logos. So yeah, it's all about the villains. I mean, there was a plot with the heroes, but if you think about it, the heroes didn't go anywhere. They wouldn't do anything, really. I mean, there was stuff happening, but like... It's the Legion who time-traveled, had their own mission, did all that thing. So it was yeah. their episode, which is always, always fun. And, I mean, Legion's already great. You get to see villains together. But now you actually get to see them, like, doing their own thing, not just from a villainous perspective, which, gotta love it. Obviously, you've gotta love the Legion. You've gotta love... We've still got Phil, a.k.a. Rip. So, yeah, you've got that. And... Just as a reminder, as I said last time when we watched Raiders of the Lost Art, I said that was the very first thing I ever saw of Legends, and this counts too because I saw this r immediately afterwards. Oh, so, geez. yeah. Oh, I love... I and mean, that's the thing. Like I said, what a way to get me excited for the show. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, there were so, so many good moments. Obviously, the episode properly opens with showing us how Malcolm was recruited, because we hadn't seen that yet, even though we'd been in a couple of episodes. So we get to see he's been picked up ever since the finale of series season four of Arrow. Yeah, because he was watching the news that Dame Ian died. Yeah, so now we know... So, yeah, that's where Malcolm's been the whole time. I mean, we knew that a couple of episodes, but, yeah, that's why he hasn't shown up in Arrow. He's been pulled from the timeline, so... Mm. Yeah, you've got all that stuff, which is great. You get... We do have the legend side of things, where first off, the legends get to meet Lily. Lily's here. Does that mean Lily is smarter than Stein? Because she could hook the thing up to Gideon, but he couldn't? Well... Why did we need her? She worked with Ray, and apparently they both work in the same field as we saw in Invasion. They both use nanotechnology. True. So I guess she just needed to help out Ray, because they both worked on it. So it does make sense that it's her and Ray who worked on it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the legends finally figure out who it was. Because if you remember, if you remember, um, Stein wasn't in the room at the end of season one of, Le of Flash when, because at the very end, his face goes back to his real face right before he fades out of existence. But okay. Stein wasn't there. He was up in the main room. He couldn't see it all. So he wouldn't have seen it, but he's the one who knew everything. He just had to, he just didn't connect the dots for some reason. Oh, so he wouldn't know what Eobard Thorne looks like. No, he didn't know his face, and I guess he never saw... Wait a minute! What? Well, no, no, it makes sense, because I don't believe there's not been any point where Eobard, wearing the yellow suit, has been in front of um, Stein. He has been in front of him, but... He hasn't worn a suit. If he'd worn a suit, Stein would have recognised him. Kind of. He would have recognised the suit. Yeah. But like I said, he's never seen his regular face. because. And the reason it took the others so long is because they mentioned they were using the Time Master's records. And the Time Master's didn't have records of him because he does not currently exist. There is some questions about about that but i guess i can't really get into that until we talk about more stuff in the flash but yeah it is a bit odd that the time masters wouldn't have any records of eobard considering they're from the future but don't even think about it any well no because they're from the future but we're in a timeline where in the future eobard was never born but he... Oh, it doesn't make any sense. Look, don't... Eobard's timeline never makes any sense because he obviously was born because he came back in season two. It does. Speaking of timelines, I really wish they would tell us more about what happened in Stein's life in this new timeline because Lily doesn't even know about Firestorm. So where was she during season one of Flash, huh? I would have expected that she'd be... I don't know, home with Clarissa or something? Maybe she was off travelling at university. She's presumably 30 years old or a tiny bit younger than that. So, you know, she wouldn't live 
with them. We True. don't we don't know if she would have lived with them. So they she seems to be living in the same house as her later on when Jax goes to visit them. Or in invasion, when he shows up looking for Clarissa. Yeah. So, I mean, it is an interesting point. It's not so much a problem per se. It's a bit like Flashpoint where you never truly know what these different versions of season one and two are. You just kind of have to assume things work out. So it's like a mini Flashpoint for Stein. You just have to assume there's a slightly different timeline. Don't ask how it works, but it works. How did, yeah, how did she not already know about Firestorm? But yeah, getting back to the Legion, I loved seeing them there. You get to see Damien and Malcolm fight, which is great. You get a lot of really good moments from Phil. I mean, he was great in the last episode, but this episode is where he shines. And it's sad he won't be around anymore, because what? Poor guy. I know, I just love him in this episode. There's so many good moments, especially, you know, you put him there and he's interacting with the villains and, you know, and then he has to go on his own little mission and, and all that. And at the bank, you know, he thinks he's from the past, so he doesn't know anything about technology. I like the fact that... I also love that because, you know, he's calling the future cool, and that's only a couple years off of present day for us. And there's nothing except for the laser beams in the bank vault. Nothing else we've seen in this episode is out of place beyond what happens in this to in real life. So we just have to assume in four years laser beams get invented. Hmm. But everything else, yeah, it's like he's just calling... Yeah, I know, right as the door was closing, there's lasers. Which brings up my main nitpick with this episode. Speeds just First... can't phase through lasers. Yeah, okay. First, Eobard acted like he was trapped in the, that room. Why can't he phase through the door? Sure, as the door was closing, we saw lasers appear. But if you can't get through the lasers, why not just go around them and go through the wall? And speaking of that, they then trap the thingy in there. The black flash. The black flash. And it cannot do the same thing I just said. I also said, why couldn't he just, like, Eobard spin around really fast and create a wormhole and go to the future to pop out of that room? Yeah. Also, if standing still really is the answer... Why didn't he think of that? Because he's an idiot. He's become so reliant on his speed, he doesn't think of the obvious solution. Some people don't think of that because they're so used to relying on the things they know. But yeah, they've got to... This episode does have a lot... This is, you know... I mean, think about it this way. Last season, there were quite a lot of plots which really hinged on you knowing stuff about Arrow. And this episode especially really hinges on you knowing Flash stuff. You've got the backstory of Eobard Thorn, and then of course you've got the Black Flash, where if you remember at the very end, the time wraith, at the very end of season two, the time wraiths took Zoom and turned him into the Black Flash. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of references and callbacks, so this episode is just chock full of stuff. But yeah, so we get so many good sequences. There is a tiny nitpick of like, the, the um, legends have all these pictures of other speedsters where if you actually pause and take a close look at those speedsters, if you know the moments they're from, they oh, don't yeah. make any sense. Well, you could say the like same. The, like the bit where um, there's one of Jay Garrick, and I am almost certain it's from the bit in the episode in season three where, like, the, where he takes Barry and tells, teaches him a lesson, but they're in the 90s. So don't ask questions. Well, okay. You could say the same thing about Day of the Doctor where, where she takes Clara in the vault and those pictures of people. I know. Some of them are a bit odd. None of them. Don't think about it too much. But at least that one, you're not supposed to be freeze-framing. They're just like, ah, hey, just grab a picture. <laughs> so apparently these pictures are from the Time Master's records. Again, doesn't make sense, but who cares? Unless that wouldn't explain why it can be from any point in time, but yeah. But anyway, this episode has so much in it. And but then, of course, then, if it's from the Time Masters records and the Time Masters are from the future, logically they should also have a picture of somebody we haven't seen yet. I know that would be a spoiler, but... That's true. They, take, they should have pictures of future speedsters we won't see yet. Yeah. Or will they? Maybe that speech is speech, didn't it? I mean, your logic is they can't have a picture of Thorn because he supposedly never even existed, even though he does, don't question it. 
But then by that logic, maybe we haven't changed the timeline to into a point where any future speeds just won't exist. Oh, yeah, true. The one I'm thinking of... I don't, I don't know which one... The interesting thing is, I don't know what you're thinking of and you don't want to spoil things. But you're right in, in the sense of, well, think of it. We don't know at what point... If I'm, think, if I'm thinking of certain speeches in the future, maybe they just don't exist yet. The speech... The, um, well, kind, I don't, the Time Masters can't have future references because they can't be updating their timelines. They're all dead. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure that the timeline doesn't get changed again. So the person I'm thinking of should exist in the future in the current timeline. I don't know which one you're thinking of. Oh, interesting. I think I know which one you're thinking of. I was thinking of a totally different one, which also raises... Look, every speedster they raises... Wait, on a different note, this isn't the speedster we were thinking of, but did they have a picture of Savitar? Ah. Hmm. That would raise questions too. Well, it makes sense to not have a picture of Savitar because maybe the Time Master Records knew that he's who he is. I guess. Look... I don't, don't, don't think about it. You're right. Which, again, but if they did, would they be, wait, we're not going to get into that, but if the Time Masters had that information and the lead, that would, but think of it this way. If they're getting all this information from Time Master Records and the Time Master Records know who Savitar is, they presumably were going through some special computer that had these records and then printed out these photos. So... The legends had to say, okay, we're going to ignore Savitar, but then that means they had to stumble upon the information of who Savitar is. Uh, Let's not think about any of this. <laughs> maybe they weren't properly looking at... Well, Savitar but, wouldn't have been listed as his own entry, would he? But then... You're... Let's not get into this. We're going to spoil Savitar. <laughs> You're the one who brought it up. Oops. It's fine, it's fine. But yeah, you're right. Why don't they have pictures of other speedsters? Your logic... But then you've got the logic of why don't they have a picture of any version of the reverse Flash? Let's not think about it. Well, in this timeline, reverse Flash does not exist. However, the person I am thinking of does exist in the future. Probably. No, they won't! Why not? In a timeline where Savitar exists, how could the one you're thinking of exist? Oh my god, you're right! You're right! We this... have to change time and get rid of Savitar first be before we can create someone else. Anyway, enough about speedsters that we shouldn't be talking about. This episode was still great. Yes. We're just nitpicking over the stupidest things. But it's not a nitpick because none of those speedsters exist in this timeline. None of it makes any sense. Maybe they did have a picture of Savitar. I'll go look one day. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I'm still going to give this episode a 9.5. I'm very tempted to give it a 10, but I'll give it a 9.5. Uh, 8.5. I love it. I mean, I love villains. I love Phil. I love everything about this episode. I've got to love it. Yeah, yeah. What is the next episode called? Turncoat. Well, we already saw the cliffhanger. They've turned Rip evil. Yeah. And he went back in time and he's killed General Washington. Which, um, like before, this with Al Capone and stuff, this is clearly just a trap to make an aberration to get the legends to come here because they want the amulet thingy. Well, it worked. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway... <laughs> Enough about this messy speedster conundrum. We'll see you next time for more legends and other things as well. See you, see you next, next time, guys. guys.